want to take a moment at the beginning of this video to let you know that as the remnant, we are meeting the first Saturday of every month. So this Saturday, April 1st, will be that first Saturday again. This will be our fourth or fifth meeting. It's going to be in Centerview, Missouri at 401 South Walnut. We'll meet at 5, go live on YouTube at 6. If you feel like you are part of the remnant, please consider joining us. If you can't make this meeting, make one of them. It's about meeting each other. It's about knowing each other so we're not scattered. <laughs> Welcome to a series called The End of Times. We're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to see what it is we can expect to happen in the end times. More importantly, what it is we should be doing. And as we've gone through this book, we've hit that place where heaven and earth have been decreated. And every single episode I've filmed inside and God, uh, just as the earth has been decreated and we have the new earth and the new heaven and the new Jerusalem, um, I just felt called to be out in the sunrise uh, by the water each time. Um, it's a new thing that God has done. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and as we've talked about this, what we've seen is John had been taken up in the spirit by one of the angels uh, who had the, the plagues, the final plagues on the earth. And he has shown uh, this new heaven, this new earth, this new city, Jerusalem. And the aspects and the details in this place is very significant. So we're just going to spend some time focusing on each piece of this as John sees it and what it means to us. Uh, so we're just gonna pick it up where we left off. Revelation 21, starting verse nine. Now one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. The names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And we talked about that last episode. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Okay, this is very, very significant. So heaven, the foundations of heaven literally have the apostles' names written on them. Uh, this is no mistake. This is no accident. It's just not a place. Well, let's put them here. It's very important we understand why are the 12 apostles' names written on the foundation of the New Jerusalem, the, the eternal dwelling place of God with man, and their names are on the foundation. Let's talk about whose names, first of all. So if you look at a list of the apostles, um, ultimately what you have is you have Matthew, Philip, Thomas, Andrew, Simon. Now, Judas was taken off this list. His name is not on the foundation, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, James, James the son of Alphaeus, John, Peter, and finally Jude. Now, here's the thing about Judas. Let's just kind of get past this real quick. So Judas um, obviously w w is not on that wall. And a lot of people will assume, well, it's Paul's name. Well, no, Paul was an apostle. He doesn't fit the description of apostle. He had to be with Jesus while he was here on earth, and Paul was not. Uh, but uh, what we find is that if you look at Acts 1, um, We'll start in verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no one live in it. Let another take his office. They're talking about Judas there. So there's prophecy about Judas saying, you know, he's, he's out of here. He's off the list. Therefore of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph called Barsabas, who is sure named Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. 
So you have Matthias on this list as well. And Matthias was with Jesus. He wasn't one of the 12, but he was with Jesus the, while he was on this earth and he, he qualifies for the apostleship. So here, what you're looking at is you're looking at the foundations of heaven with these 12 names on them. The fact that their names are on here points to that the foundation of the Christian faith. It is the, it is Christ that has redeemed mankind, but it is the faith in Jesus Christ that cleanses us, that, that allows us to, to embrace that gift that then we can boldly enter into a holy presence of a holy God. And it is these 12 men that built the foundation of what we are living in today, the Christian faith. The Christian church is the steward of the Christian faith until Christ returns. These men were the first of their kind. And these men were the last of their kind too, because these men followed Jesus literally. They picked up their cross and literally followed them. Peter, uh, the first leader of the church uh, after Jesus Christ, he was crucified upside down. He literally picked up his cross and followed Jesus. All these other men were martyred and killed brutally except for John. And he was sent off into exile into the island of Patmos, which is the only reason we even see this revelation and have it written down is because of John. He's the only one that survived, but he died in prison, essentially. This is significant because what we see in the church today is we see in the church today nothing, nothing like what these early apostles did. None of these great pastors that you watch on TV that you send your money to or none of these mega church, their names aren't going to be anywhere, anywhere on that thing. The names of these apostles are there because that thing is there because of them. We have the Christian face because of the foundation that they laid in the very beginning, because of what they did and they endured when the Holy Spirit filled them, they lit this world on fire with the Holy Spirit. And we have what we have because of them. It only makes sense that their names are on the foundation. Of course their names are on the foundation. It's the new Jerusalem. We wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for them. We have what we have in the Christian faith because of the road that was laid by these first apostles. So of course their names are written on the foundation. They are the foundation, literally. Like we wouldn't have it without them. Once Christ left, the Holy Spirit came and the Holy Spirit and those apostles lit this world on fire and everything in the world changed. And we are now seeing the shock waves of what they did. We're, we're still experiencing those shock waves of what those first, those 12 guys did. It's incredible. It's just incredible. And now we have this faith. I have the word written down. I can now boldly enter into the holy presence of a holy God, knowing what I know because of what these 12 men did. It's very significant. And it's very significant that we understand that, that their names are written on the foundation, not for decorative reasons or just to give them a shout out. They're on the foundations of heaven because we can go there and it is built for us because of the things that they did. Go back to Revelation 21, 14. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb. What an honor, what an incredible honor. Well, I hope these videos are helping. Stick with us, we're gonna keep digging in. Uh, we're almost done, only two, three years in. Good job. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Hope these videos are helping. Any thoughts or insight, definitely put that in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.